Good afternoon or good morning depending when you're listening and watching this video. Um, my name is Dr Oliver Moore and I work at the University of Gloucestershire and what I'd like to just show you in a, in a brief couple of minutes is to um, look at how to use a quadrat and um, look at some of the species we might find in it. Uh, first of all what is a quadrat? Well uh, the word quad seems to signify uh, four, it's a, I think it's, it comes from the Russian and as you can see we have a four-sided uh, square. Uh, you can make this with, with, with a couple of rulers or four rulers or a piece of string with some pins in each corner and then make a nice square shape. Um, why are we using a quadrat? Well we're looking at species that we're likely to find inside the quadrat um, instead of trying to look at all the species on a particular lawn or a sports field or your play area, instead of that we're focusing down to a much smaller area. We're taking a sample. Uh, sometimes you can take, it's, it's better that you take more than one sample, but it's far quicker to do it this way, to look at the species we've got here, rather than trying to count every blade of grass. So let's look at some of the species. Um, first of all I've got an escapee, so I'm going to look at him or her, or probably both in the case of a snail, uh, before it escapes my quadrat. Um, so in the case of the snail I can then look round to see how many other snails I've got in this quadrat. I can only count one and so therefore um, I'll just put um, common garden snail and tell it off as one scene. However, <laughs> if I wanted to try and count all the, all the dandelions in this quadrat, um, it's a little bit harder to do that. I can see um, two dandelion flowers, these bright yellow things, um, which actually contain loads of different florets in each individual flower head. Um, however, if we look at their, their leaves, which are important for photosynthesis, or making um, food from the sun's light energy, you can see that actually we've got some leaves in here with no flower head, so it's actually much harder to count individual flowers. Therefore, what we might do, we might try and estimate how much percentage cover they're covering. So if we said the whole of this quadrat represents 100%, um, we can then look at how much of the dandelion leaves um, are actually covering that and you can somehow get an estimate because I can somehow try and squeeze these dandelion plants into a particular corner and when I do that I can see that they actually cover um, less than 50% of the whole quadrat, probably something about 40% when I look at all the different dandelions. What am I talking about dandelions? I'm going to be naughty and take a leaf off here. Um, here is a leaf of a dandelion plant. It's generally hairless and you'll notice that it's quite raggedy. The leaves are quite raggedy. They're shaped like the teeth of a lion and in fact the, the French for teeth is don. So don de lion is teeth of the lion and that's where it gets its name from. Dandelion or don de lion. Other species we might find in here are clovers, which some of you might have hunted for in the past. Um, it's great if you can ever find a four-leaf clover, but generally clovers have three leaves. There's two main species you might get in your school field. There's the um, white clover, which is what this species is. Uh, that's Even when there's no flowers, you can tell it from the red clover because the white clover does not have hairs on the underside of its leaves, whereas on red clover, you'd, um, with a hand lens or a magnifying glass, you'd be able to see tiny little hairs uh, on the underside of the leaves. So even if there's no flowers, you can identify these plants. Um, we also have, um, in this area, we have something called creeping buttercup which is this plant here. Uh, creeping buttercups, uh, they often occur in grassy areas because um, often grassy areas are associated with animals that eat grass plants, but um, buttercups contain a, a sort of a toxin, so the animals tend to avoid that. Cows and sheep tend to avoid creeping buttercup, and uh, certainly we shouldn't be eating these either. Uh, some of you will be familiar with with daisies, they've got quite a fleshy leaf, a sort of a spoon-shaped fleshy leaf, like so, quite fleshy. And um, most of you will be familiar with the with the daisy, and hopefully some of you will have made daisy chains uh, to put on your heads. Um, 
So with each of these species, once you've identified them, and there's various keys and guides you can use, um, you can then make a little list and then try and estimate how much cover of the actual quadrat uh, that they are taking up. If you know the size, the area that your quadrat is covering, and then you can look at the bigger area of your sports field, you can maybe measure that, uh, for some of you who might be interested in doing that, then you could scale up from what you've found in your quadrat to how much there might be in your overall field.